All right, we are, I'm gonna hit the go live button. All right, hi there friends, I think. Looks like we're there. You're live. Better turn that off. <laughs> <laughs> I was checking that myself. <laughs> well, I got to get it pulled up on my phone too, and I got to make sure my phone's all turned down. Well, hi, friends, and welcome to our Solid Hot Foil Plate 101 class. We're excited to see all of you here today. Yes. We enjoyed last week's Hot Foil, and I know we had so many questions about the Solid Foil Plate, and we felt like that deserved a whole um, episode class all on its own so we could really focus on that well. Absolutely. There's a, uh, you know, um, the solid hot foil plate. Um, it has a, you know, takes a little bit of learning and um, it can take a little bit of troubleshooting um, just based on the machines you have and the pressure levels and the heat level. So we're here today to help you um, troubleshoot uh, if you happen to have any issues with your solid hot foil plate. Yes, I'm just seeing one, our usual question on if we're sisters, we are not, <laughs> not, not officially, but I'll, basically, I'll but no, not biologically, <laughs> not officially. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, well, that's funny. So there will not be anyone in the uh, comments today moderating. Kennery couldn't make it. So it's just Heather <laughs> and I, uh, we will do our best to uh, watch comments and stuff, but um, it's a little bit hard when you're also you know, demonstrating and doing stuff at the same time. So we may miss a lot of questions, but hopefully um, we cover enough that uh, you will learn a lot about your solid hot foil plate. And you might see one of us commenting or answering a question in there while the other one is yeah. demoing and showing stuff. So if you see that, it's probably one of us and we're kind of watching that in between, so. Absolutely. Right. Um, uh, Roxanne, yes, I have your email. I'm just waiting um, until the window for uh, winners to be that when can claim their prize, and then I'll take care of it. All right. So it looks like we've got plenty of people in here. Should we go ahead and get started and talk about Absolutely. what the solid foil plate is? <laughs> so, uh, because she'll never do this herself. <laughs> Um, I yep. am going to toot Heather's horn a little bit here. So, uh, we came out with hot foiling products in February of 2021. So last year, and we loved it. We loved testing it and, uh, finding out that you could ink blend over, over foiling and all of that. Lots of great things. But we always had this big beef. We were like, I wish there was something that we could do with all of this leftover waste that happens they are perfectly good images. Um, but you know, we didn't really, we didn't really think about it. So then Heather was live one day and I was moderating and we were demoing hot foil plates. And all of a sudden I can tell like Heather has this little like epiphany and I'm like, hmm, I wonder what that is. And, but you know, we just continue on with the live and like literally the second after the live got over, Heather pinged Kenneria and she's like, we need to get on Zoom right now. And I'm going to let Heather take over. <laughs> Basically, I mean, Leah kind of explained that. So when I started hot foiling, I always, it, it, my kids would tell me, because every time I'd sit and look at that foil and go, I wish there was something I could do with it, but I can't think of anything. And my girls were always like, mom, don't be a hoarder. Just throw it away. Just throw it away. So I throw it away. But every time it was like, it's so pretty though. And there's so much foil. And just like Leah said, someone asked that exact question that had already been floating through my mind saying, boy, I wish there was something to do with that negative foil. And it was like just this light bulb. And it took a little while to kind of try and explain what was in my head. I know, I think Leah got it right away. And Kenry was like, what? You got to show me, you got to explain. And then we started the slow, long process of testing and working on it and perfecting it. I don't have any more. I was going to pull out the stack that I have of all the ones that we manufactured and I tested and said, mm, no, we need to change or we need to adjust. We worked on it to get it just right so that it would work on both machines and um, just to make sure it would work as well. And I know a lot of people still have issues and that's what we're hoping we can fix today because there is a little bit of a learning curve. Um, and a lot of it's just practicing and learning and that's what we did and that's how we figured out what works. Um, and you'll see as we share and explain things, 
that some of what works for Leah works different for me and everyone's machine. And that's what we want to show you is we can't give you a perfect formula that says always do this and you'll always have perfect results because there's different cardstock, there's different foils, every machine, um, even what die cut machine you're pairing it with, just the most minuscule changes um, can make a difference. So I hope what you take away from this is to play with your own setup and just get familiar with it because that's what we had to do. And that's um, how we found out. And hopefully this can kind of point you in the right direction with whatever problem you're having to know how to fix it. <laughs> Absolutely. Real quick, I want to answer Mary K. Mail's question. She said, is the solid plate sold separately or does it come with the system? We don't offer hot foil systems. Those are other brands. So yes, the solid hot foil plate is sold separately from us. It's branded under our name, but we formulated it to work with the three leading hot foil systems that are on the market. Right. And we specifically, we've tested it with the Spellbinders Glimmer and the Gemini foil press. And we're going to be yeah. showing some with both of those today. One disclaimer that I want to just put out there right up front that we mention all the time. The Gemini foil press comes with a metal sham. Um, and when we were first coming out with this, we discovered that that was a thing. And I went ahead and tested and tried. And me personally, and I know, I think Leah had tried it. She had a machine at one point um, and didn't really have great results. I had to like fiddle with shims and it just didn't work. And I ended up getting frustrated and the solid foil plate that we produced worked great with it. So I always tell everyone, if you have a Gemini junior, or if you buy one, test that first, you don't have to go spend the money and buy something that is redundant and you don't need, because you might have perfect results with that. That whole, everybody has different, but I appreciated not having to mess with shims. And I, I mean, I, I take that back. Sometimes with the solid foil plate, I do use one shim, but it's not like a stack of shims. It's not multiples <laughs> and piles yeah. of them. So yeah, um, like I have to use two shims with my solid hot foil plate based on yeah. the, you know, the age of my hot foil system, um, which is what we found. I always thought it was actually the age of my die cut machine, but what we found is I have a brand new die cut machine and I still have to use two shims. So it tells me it's the yes. more my foil <laughs> system. Exactly. I did want to address another quick question that I just saw. Um scroll up and I'm sorry, I don't, I can't see whose name it was now, but they were asking if, if we could do five by seven backgrounds. And unfortunately hot foil, at least to the hot foil system I have does not accommodate a five right. by seven sized, um, uh, image. So yeah. we are for now relegated to no more than a two sized, basically a little we bit bigger hoping. with the solid hot foil plate. Yeah. And I think Gemini has a bigger one that is come out or a bigger adapter. Oh, do they? Okay. I think I heard someone talk about that, but I haven't tried it or used it. So, um, that could be something down the line. We keep holding out for a slim line. You know, we want guys. a slim line. <laughs> Anybody out there manufacturing hot foil systems, we really love slim line. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, I'm seeing Christine's comment on there that she used the metal shim before the plate came out, but she got the plate and never looked back. So oh, very cool. I'm excited that that helped you out too. All right. Okay, well, should we go ahead and get started? Yeah, I'm going to switch it to uh, speaker mode and I'm going to flip my camera around. Maybe I'll do that first, actually. Oops, <laughs> wrong button. I do, always do that. And I will mute myself and let Leah take it away. Perfect. All right, friends, give me one second while I uh, dial this in because uh, sometimes it's just a little too bright. So there we go. Okay, so. As you can see, my platform is ready. Um, hopefully that's all on screen. I'm not sure if it is, um, but my platform is ready. I've turned it on. I've let it heat up. So one thing that we I'm going to show you is I'm going to uh, I am going to specifically get bad results so that I can show you um, what uh, some troubleshooting things or reasons why you might be getting bad results. So I have let my system fully heat up, but one thing we do know about the solid hot foil plate is it needs a little bit more heating than, uh, the standard heat, but I'm going to show you. So say you're brand new to foiling, you just got your solid hot foil plate, and this is what the manual would tell you to do. So I'm going to put my solid hot foil plate on there and I'm going to hit that timer button. And what you're going to see 
when I do this is the solid plate just needs a little extra heat. Now I am using uh, some leftover bad results that I got from last week when I was trying to foil color cardstock. I thought I don't wanna waste a perfectly good negative foil piece on <laughs> ones that I am specifically trying to get bad results. So we're just going to use some bad result negative piece for the bad results that I'm trying to give you today. Now, Heather and I always joke that um, watch, I'll get perfect results, but I don't think I will. <laughs> I think that I have this dialed in enough that I am truly going to give you bad results this first time around. So we just have to wait until the timer goes in. I am still, for reference sake, I'm going to do everything on the hammer mill 100 pound cardstock. Um, so just so that as we go, everything is consistent and done consistently on the same thing. So the timer button has turned off. So I'm going to take this off the base. I'm going to put my reverse foil down and I'm going to go ahead and just add the two shims that come with the foil system. So of course I know about mine that I need paper shims, but it's something that I didn't know right out of, oh, I gotta put paper down. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I got ahead of myself chatting with you all and it's possible that I foiled my mat a little bit, but that's okay. We didn't do too much and because it's not heated up enough, we're just going to run it through one more time. Okay, so there's paper down. Let's go ahead and run it through. So we will backtrack. So the first time running this through, I've always, you know, I've always just followed what the manual says. So I just heated it up the one time, the one timer button, and I didn't add any paper shims. And you're going to see here that I don't get good results at all. And I purposely did this. So it only really foiled on the outsides. It didn't foil really well. So this tells me one, I did not have enough heat. And it also tells me it's likely I didn't have enough pressure. But right now we're just troubleshooting the fact that it did not have enough heat. So that with that being said, and something that maybe um, to, if you wanna write it down or you can also just reference this video again, when you're using the hot foil plate, it can almost never be too hot. So um, I always let my solid hot foil plate heat up with my machine. However, sometimes when you're foiling, you are foiling the initial designs and then you, um, you want to go ahead and foil the negatives. If that's the case, go ahead and put your solid hot foil plate on your system, hit the <laughs> timer button, but then what I typically do is once the timer clicks off and says it's ready to go, I will remove this thing from the base to reset it, let it say the platform is ready again, and then hit the timer button again for a second time. And that for me reassures me and tells me that after the two sets of timers that my solid hot foil plate will be perfectly heat up. Now, in my next segment, I am going to troubleshoot a little bit more. Um, so I'm going to try to intentionally get bad results again and do a little bit more troubleshooting. But I do want to let my solid hot foil plate fully heat up. So we are going to click over to Heather and she is going to take over for the next portion of her segment. So I'm going to mute myself and Heather, it's over to you. OK, and I'm unmuting and I've got my Gemini here. I'm going to do two different versions on the Gemini with the solid foil plate. One is using the Gemini. And as I'm doing the Gemini here, I want to point out, someone mentioned there isn't a larger foil platform. It's an adapter for the full-size Gemini. So ignore what I said earlier. That was wishful thinking. Um, but the first one I'm going to do, this is a negative um, from actually yesterday's uh, Facebook Live. And I'm using the Gemini foil for this first one. And then I'm gonna switch over and do one with the Spellbinders because there's a bit of a trick to them both. The Gemini foil, I've just been learning this the more I've started to use um, my Gemini machine. The foil press paper craft foil likes to be done at a lower heat. 
So I'm on just my low heat setting. I've set this on while my machine was heating up, so it would heat up. I'm gonna go ahead and start that 30 second timer. And then I will do my hot foiling um, with this. And I don't believe, we'll test and see, but I think when I did it yesterday, I did not need a shim with the Gemini foil and this. Um, when I got to the glimmer foil, I needed a higher heat setting and also needed a shim because this needs a little more heat to work. So for this first one though, I'm just gonna go with the lower heat setting and no shim and we'll kind of see if it works as well as it did yesterday. So I'm gonna set my foil down here, a larger piece. Oh goodness, hold on. That's an already foiled piece, hold on a sec. Grab a fresh, clean piece of cardstock. This is the heart grid of my negative space of that. I'm gonna run over to my Gemini and be right back. And while we do this, I'm gonna move this up to a higher heat now for the spellbinders. I did, I'm gonna show you my um, different options that I tested here while we wait for that to heat up. But let's see how. And just like I thought, the spell or the Gemini foil worked great in that. So the lower heat really works well with the Gemini foil in my very limited experience. I'm not an expert by any means on that. Now, while this heats up here, I'm gonna slide that to the side for a minute. We're gonna use the Sending Hugs and Good Vibes top foil plate. It's a little bit of a smaller plate. And in testing this out, um, for that first one for the Gemini, I did 30 seconds and I did the low heat setting. Uh, look at your manual and, and kind of follow what it says and then play with moving it up if you need to. But I did the Sending Hugs and Good Vibe and I picked a colored Spellbinders, which is a little harder, a little trickier. This one is called Moon Dust. It's that beautiful blue um, kind of iridescent one. So I started on low heat. I might've, I think I even did medium heat and I didn't use a shim. And look at how horrible that is. I almost got no foil transferred. There was nothing there. I got a nice little debossed effect, which was kind of pretty. And then I moved the heat up to high and I did not use a shim. And I don't know if it shows in the video, but there's a lot of speckled spots that didn't transfer really well. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't perfect. Finally, for what worked for this, again, a colored spellbinder soil, I had to go all the way up to high heat. My machine just heat up and use a shim. So I'm gonna do that with the negative on this one and assume that the same settings are gonna be what I need for this one as well. And I just realized I better make sure I have a piece of cardstock again, or I'm gonna do exactly what Leah did already. And let me get a bigger sheet here because you don't want any extra over transfer. And then I'm gonna put the cardstock shim in there and the top plate, and let's go run this through. Okay, pull my plate off and my shim. And let's see how this worked. Find the edge and pull up. And notice even there, I even have a little bit of really not perfect transfer. So you know what? We're gonna pop it back in and we're gonna run it through one more time. Only I'm gonna leave it on here to heat. This is something else I usually don't do, but I've seen more people do it this way. Oh, maybe I didn't even do the 30 second timer. I think I hit start and forgot when I put up to high heat, it hadn't even hit that. This might even work better. So we're gonna do another 30 seconds and heat that up a little more. But I kind of wanted to show you um, a little bit of the difference between the foil that's designed. Um, you can use them interchangeably, but the foil press one is gonna work the most easily with your Gemini foil press. The spell binders will work. It just might take a little bit of 
tweaking your, your sandwich, tweaking your heat, kind of adjusting. So I feel like that's a common issue because everyone thinks hot foil is hot foil. They're not all the same. Let's go run this through one more time and see what our final result is. And let's see, I bet this worked. It's, it's definitely a little bit better. There's still a tiny bit that maybe isn't great. So I might even need two shims with the small binder. So keep that in mind. If you're doing the reverse solid foil plate and you're using the foil that's not designed for your machine, it might be kind of hit and miss. This is still hammer mill. I'm still using, um, you know, all of the same. But if you don't get great results, the colored are also one of the hardest. If you're using a gold or um, different things like that, likely I would have had perfect results on this with maybe the aura or something like that. Um, but some of the more difficult colors, it's not just you. <laughs> it might just be that it's a little bit hard to do. So um, you can see on there, there is a little bit left. Um, one other thing before I pop it back over to Leah that I wanted to note, um, I'm gonna turn this off here now, I'll let this cool off for a minute. But one thing I had heard, and I hadn't noticed right away, is the Gemini does, you should use the lowest heat setting you possibly could. So definitely a good idea um, to check that because it too long on high heat can start to warp this plate. It's not that bad right now, but I've been doing a lot of high heat stuff and I started to notice, oh, that actually is warping a little. So right before the live, I pulled it off um, the machine or this thing was hot. So I turned it over, <laughs> laid it down flat and I put um, just a ream of hammer mill cardstock that I had. So something moderately heavy, not like smashed it to dust. Um, but I put that on and then as it cooled, I felt like it kind of flattened back down. I don't know that that would work all the time, but I thought I would share that little idea just because it made a difference um, for me as well. So uh, Bonnie, you know, you can do too much pressure. I see her question, wondering if you could do too much. That's why I don't recommend, don't start with the highest heat. Don't start with, you know, don't put 10 shims in to start with. Start with one, maybe see if you need to do two. I imagine if I'd done one more, I probably would have gotten better on this, but I specifically chose this foil because I know it's kind of a fiddly harder one sometimes, and it's one I struggle with. So I wanted to pick the hardest so you could see that sometimes, um, you know, despite your best efforts, despite how much you've worked on something and played with it, it might not always work perfect and that's okay. Um, it's just something to learn from and play a little bit more. So I'm gonna switch back over and I think Leah's gonna show a little more um, with the glimmer and some different ways. And then I'll pop back and I'm gonna switch machines and do a little bit of how it works for me with the glimmer. Perfect. Thanks, Heather. So I'm going to do a little bit more troubleshooting with you guys. I've gone ahead and I've turned the timer on. My solid plate has been sitting on the glimmer machine while Heather was doing her segment. Uh, so I've been letting it get nice and hot. I've been hitting the timer and pulling it off and starting that process over again. So here's where you think, okay, I've let my solid hot foil plate get hot enough. I should be good to go. So I'm going to remove my glimmer hot foil system from the base, the part that you run through the machine. I'm going to go ahead and put my negative piece of foil down on my solid hot foil plate. And I'm going to put paper down this time because, you know, that's important. <laughs> I'm just using the backside of that um, paper that I did the initial time. So I'm not wasting a bunch of cardstock today. And then I'm going to put the two shims that come with the machine. And so when you are doing foiling right out of the gate, you may not know it, that your system needs paper shims. I know that about mine, but we're gonna pretend like I don't know that. And I'm going to go ahead and run that well-heated solid hot foil plate with the reverse image through my die cut machine. And we're gonna go ahead and put this back on the base. And we're gonna take a look at the results, but I am not going to pill it fully off because I'm going to start peeling. And as you can see, 
I still have gotten splotchy results here. So we're going to let the platform get back to green and we'll hit the timer again. But while we're waiting for it to do that, um, I'm going to mention here. So this is where if you have if you have heat heated up your solid plate nice and good, you know it's hot enough, and you run it through your machine with the shims that came with your machine and you're still getting not so great results, that's when you know you need to add more pressure. And that's will come in the form of paper shims. So what I know about my machine is that I need two paper shims when I'm using my solid hot foil plate. I'm gonna quickly click that timer button real quick and let it start going. I have a 100 pound block of cardstock and a 65 pound block of cardstock. And I'm going to go ahead and put them in between my two shims that come with the machine. And hopefully this time it will yield better results when I run it through. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this piece down, back down and let it get some heat in there. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and place those down for the rest of the time here. And we will run it through again. And hopefully this time it will yield better results. Um, the area where I lifted up and it, you saw that it was a little splotchy, that may not be perfect. That may be an area where you uh, cover with something, um, but we'll see, we'll see how it goes. So one thing I did want to mention um, that we, I think we've totally forgot to mention at the beginning is that this class is all about the solid hot foil plate. Now we did do a more of a hot foil 101 class last week. So if you're still um, uh, kind of troubleshooting just hot foil, not necessarily your solid hot foil plate, definitely be sure to check that um, class out. Okay, my timer button is off. So I'm gonna pull this from the base. This is the only time that I don't necessarily, where I uh, have sandwiched it before pulling it off the base, but that's okay. Cause I wanted that foil to have a little bit of extra heat since I did start peeling it off. Okay, so now I've added my extra shims and it's a little harder to run through my machine, which means I know that it's getting a little bit of additional pressure. This isn't hurting your machine in any way, shape or form. So keep that in mind. Um, but you shouldn't need more than a couple of shims, you know, two to three, I, I think would probably be the limit. Okay, so I ran that through just a couple times. And let's see if we've gotten some better results. I'm sorry, I know that was really loud. I apologize, it kind of clinked on my glass mat. So let's take a look and see with added, um, yep, perfect, not up where I had already released it. Now this was just bad foiling to begin with, but all of the bad foiling is now on that piece of cardstock. So, um, and as you can see, I don't have any leftover residue. So there, friends, is troubleshooting when you're getting bad results. So here was the initial bad results. Uh, not enough heat, definitely not enough pressure. The first time I pulled that little bit back and you could see that it was coming out, had plenty of heat but I didn't have enough pressure. And that is where those two extra paper shims came into place. Now you may only need one, you may need two, and you may need to test out paper weights on that. So it is definitely a troubleshooting process. Um, but once you dial it in, you ha will have it dialed in and then this will just get easier and easier. So that is troubleshooting. Those are all of the different ways that I troubleshoot when I'm struggling with foiling results. Um, so now we're going to um, switch it over to Heather and she is going to show you a little bit more. Okay. Um, one thing I want my machine here, I plugged in my glimmer and it's almost hot. I'm just waiting for that platform ready light. I have my plate heating up and I can feel it. Oh, and perfect timing. There comes the light. Um, but one person asked what when we're practicing and learning what to do with those boo-boos or mistakes. So there's two things. First of all, I used to freak out about it so much because I was like, oh, I'm wasting my foil. But I want to give you a little quick perspective. This roll of foil has 15 feet. It's five inches wide by 15 feet long. So if you were doing full background, sentiment panels, whatever, even if you cut those at six inches, 
pages to give yourself a little wiggle room and extra. Out of this one roll of foil, you're gonna get 30 panels. Now add that in with using the solid foil plate and doing the reverse, you get 60 panels. Even if your learning curve is a full roll of foil and it takes you, I mean, and it won't, but even if it took you all 60, a roll of this is like what? three, five dollars. It depends when it's on sale or where you get it. It's not that expensive and paper isn't that expensive. Um, so don't be afraid to play. It's it's an investment in hot foiling. You've already bought the machine. You have the supplies. That time you learn just how to do it. Um, just don't be afraid of wasting that. That helped me a lot when I put it in that perspective. The other thing I wanted to mention is some of those background. I've seen a lot of people take those panels and maybe die cut a frame or do something. And then you're getting kind of that foiled look on there. Um, I'm gonna show you a trick a little later for foiling a die cut piece that'll help kind of maybe use up some of those scraps as well. Um, so there's a few different ways, but I'm gonna show you a little bit real quick. I'm gonna use the brush sentiments. This is one of my hands down favorite. In fact, when um, we thought of the solid foil plate, this was the first thing I thought of because all we had were florals. I don't think we had any background plates yet. But I was so excited about like our perfect sentiments and one piece sentiment dies. So I've already foiled right before we went live here. I did the original. This is um, the rose gold foil and the brush sentiments, just one of those panels. And I'm going to go ahead and do the negative here um, just to show you. So once you use those with the dies to cut them out, it's just super fun how when you die cut these out, you have the hot foiled sentiment with a white border around it. When you die cut these out with the exact same dies, you're gonna have a white sentiment with foil around the edges. It's probably one of my, hands down, the thing I use the most of my reverse um, foiled images. So let me move some of this out of the way. And then I'm gonna bring over, and then the other thing I wanted to note, I know, um, Leah showed she needed two shims to use with her machine and her um, die cut and everything. For me, when I'm normally just hot foiling, not when I'm doing the solid foil plate, I found I have best results with no shim. That's my best, um, best luck on that. Otherwise I get over foiling. For Leah, she needs that shim on hers. And we're talking about one little hundred pound sheet of cardstock. It's the most minimal difference you can imagine but it's there's a difference between good results and bad results. So on the solid foil plate, sometimes Leah needs a couple shims. I don't always, but I generally just put one shim in just to be safe because for the most part, I do better with that. All right, my timer has gone off. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this on here, get my sentiments on there, put my cardstock. I put my um, shim just in between my two plates just because it makes it easier to put it on. And then I'm going to run this through here real quick. And I also, I don't reverse and go back through my die cut machine when I'm doing regular hot foiling again, because I end up with more um, overfoiling. On the solid foil plate, you want all of that to stick. Pretty much that risk of overfoiling, you, you can't overfoil because you want every last bit of it to stick in it here there. Move this out of the way for now. And let's take a peek here and see. And you can see for me, one shim in hammer mill cardstock. And I had absolutely perfect results right on the first try. Um, I see someone asking about toner foiling. We do have a trick um, that we'll talk about later that's going to be towards the end of the live. But now that I've um, finished and shown you this and talked a little more about all that, I'm gonna switch back and Leah's gonna show you another trick that you can use the solid hot foil plate for. Awesome. <laughs> so funny enough, I also um, grabbed rose gold foil for this segment too. So great minds think alike. Okay, I am letting, I'm hitting, I have the timer button and I'm just waiting for that timer button to finish. I'm gonna show you how you can just create your own foil paper so that, if you wanted to die cut um, a word die or uh, a, you know, like a standalone die from um, the uh, 
uh, all the different foils that are available on the market, you sure can. So there's so much that you can do with a solid hot foil plate. Um, and we are hoping that, uh, looks like we are actually really good on time. So I think we're going to get to showing you a lot of all of these different other options other than just the reverse foiling. One thing I wanted to mention really quickly, my timer did go off, but I wanna give you one more troubleshooting tip that I don't even know if I've mentioned to Heather before. So if you are, if you know your hot foil plate is hot enough and you know you have enough pressure and occasionally you maybe still feel like you're getting a little bit of fuzzy results, wipe down your hot foil plate because it could have some paper residue or just some dust. I know in my house, I have dogs. And so um, just give your solid hot foil plate a nice clean. And sometimes just getting any paper residue and dust and lint and stuff off of it really, really helps. Okay, so the timer button is off. I'm gonna pull this off the base. We are going to throw just a piece of foil down. So this is not a reverse image. This is just a piece of foil. And we're going to go ahead and put a whoops, a piece of cardstock down with it. So then, of course, I'm doing what I need for my solid hot foil plate. So the two shims that come with the machine and then my two paper shims that I know my system needs. And I'm going to pull this off and just move my machine out of the way. And I'm going to slowly run it through my platinum six a couple of times. And while I'm running it through, I'm gonna answer this quick question that I'm seeing. It says, how do I clean the plate if I accidentally foil on it? And 100% acetone will clean off both your plastic shims and your hot foil plates. Keep in mind, it's kind of smelly, so you'll wanna give them a good wash afterwards before you heat them up again. And if you do apply acetone to that clear shim, it will make it a little cloudy. So if you don't want your clear shim to be cloudy, then do not, um, don't attempt to clean it with acetone. Okay, so we have our piece there. So take a look at this and we're going to just remove the release paper. And uh, we have a really lovely, ooh, I got some bad results at the bottom there, but that's okay. We could have, I wasn't noticing that I was getting a little bit of bad results at the bottom. We could have just heat that up and done it over again, but you can make full sheets of foil and then you can go ahead and cut them out with a word die, a standalone die, anything you want. And you have all of this, these colors of foil at your fingertips to create your own little pieces of foil paper. And you can make them as big as the solid plate is, um, but you can also take small pieces of foil and just make little, you know, if you have some scrap pieces of cardstock, you can um, take some smaller pieces of foil and uh, foil those up, make your own little piece of foil paper and cut anything you want out of it. So that was just another small tip for another little um, fun thing that you can do with the solid hot foil plate. And I think Heather's gonna show you another fun tip. Sorry, I was on the wrong spot to unmute myself. Okay, real quick, just to piggyback on to what Leah just showed, I wanted to show another way to do a background. If you've never used opal hot foil, it's beautiful, sheer iridescent. Leah described it like hot foiling with Versamark and sparkly clear powder. I did it on this panel of colored cardstock. <laughs> it's so pretty and so shiny and would be so much fun to use. So I thought I'd just throw out another way that even if you don't want a hot foil, a colored foil, you can add that lovely shiny iridescent look to some colored cardstock. Um, so the same thing um, as with before, play with your cardstock, play with your shims and see what works. I'm gonna show you, um, so what Leah showed was foiling a full sheet of cardstock that you can then die cut or trim into strips, layer, however you wanna do. But what if you have a die cut piece already and you wanna add foil to it? Um, sentiments work great, leaves, greenery, all kinds of fun things that way. So I'm gonna show you a pretty simple trick with this. I'm gonna use some matte gold hot foil that I have. I'm just trying to kind of switch between different foils today. 
a last week I kept it fairly consistent because I wanted um, to show you a little bit of how it worked. So here is the process for doing that on the solid foil plate. You want to put your, here, I'm going to loosen this real quick. It's all heated. My timer went off already and everything. I'm going to put my die cut face down on the pretty, or on the flat side of that A piece of just thin um, computer paper, something to protect because all that hot foil is going to stick to your machine if you don't protect it. And then my top foil plate with my shim. And I'm going to spin this in here. And I'm just going to run this through. I'm going to do the same. Let's see, Ruth's asking if you can foil a pattern in a different color on top of a solid foil piece. I have never tried that. That is a really good question. Pull out your foil and test that out. I'm, I'm curious now how that would work. All right, let's pop this out here real quick with my die cut machine. And then a little start here on the edge of that foil because it's of course adhered down onto that copy paper and peel it off. And there you have a perfectly foiled die cut piece. Isn't that pretty? I love how fun that is. And I don't know if you can tell when you die cut, you kind of have those um, raised crisp edges, um, sometimes kind of bumpy in texture. <laughs> the pressure of the foil plate and the heat makes it crispy, flat and clear. So kind of a, a fun little tidbit there as well. So, and you know, if you wanted to take this, you could almost do kind of a grungy art and reverse foil that onto something. So there's another, another option if you wanted to play with that. Really the possibilities are endless. All right, I'm gonna switch back over to Leah. She's got another something fun and then we'll pop back and I'm gonna talk about toner foiling with the solid foil plate, as promised. That's really cool. I love seeing all of the different ways to use this, this solid hot foil plate. So my timer button is, is um, going right now. So last week on the video, I, uh, I foiled one of our dies, one of our new cover plate dies. And it's this really dainty, beautiful design. More than anything, it just kind of puts a texture in the, the background of your card. And so you might notice here, and I'm hoping it shows, the foiling was very, very faint. Um, it was very minimal. So I am going to foil the reverse of that. And we're going to see how fun and bold it will be, but we'll still have that really subtle design in the foiling. So um, I did see somebody uh, ask if we had gone over where you partially peel it back and then reheat it if it didn't work. And we, sh we sure did. So when this is available for replay, um, I think I, I covered that in about the third segment. So I just wanted to mention that we definitely did cover that. Okay, so I'm going to take this off. I'm gonna put my reverse foil down on my solid hot foil plate. And then I'm going to add my cardstock. And then my four pieces, my two paper shims and my two standard shims that come with the machine. And we are going to run this through. Seems like we have a lot of people who are uh, enjoying this and they're getting a lot of tips for using their solid hot foil plate. So that's really exciting. Right, I'm just gonna run this through a couple more times. All right. And let's see how this went. I will make sure to peel off just a portion to make sure that we're good. Um, and see if I need to do any more heating up on it at all. Uh, I, I just got a new die cut machine, a new platinum, and I am still dialing it in a little bit. But uh, so I did not actually get excellent results on this. So I am actually going to do that same method again, where we let it reheat and try it again. And here is the joys of foiling live and the joys of, uh, kind of still dialing in your own systems here. So I'm just going to let this go one more time and we'll see if we can save this design um, with the reheat method. 
So in just a minute, Heather is going to show you guys a really cool uh, section about using the solid hot foil plate with toner images, which um, I'm super excited for her to share that with. So while we're waiting for my glimmer to reheat, I just wanted to um, go over one more time that um, we, you know, we are we aren't experts by any means, and we have to troubleshoot through through things. And so, hopefully, it's kind of a comfort, and it gives you a little bit more confidence that, um, you know, missed, you know, I have bad foiling results as well. Like I was just showing you here, and so we're going to see if doing this will fix my issue that I had with it not foiling as well. Um, and so you just have to troubleshoot and just try it again. And um, it's okay if it's not perfect in the end, um, it'll still be a beautiful handmade and hand foiled project that you um, can give to a friend or a loved one. And I'm sorry if you heard my little Yorkie in the background, he was uh, want, trying to get in his little bed and he was having some struggles with it. So if you heard him whining, that's what it was. He seems to be okay now. <laughs> okay, so timer button's off. Let's try this again and see if we get good results. If we don't, it just is what it is. And we will move on to Heather's next segment. But here's hoping, doing it a second time. Oops, and I may have just bumped that, but that's okay. Um, we will move on to Heather's next segment, but here's hoping that maybe we get a little bit better results. Um, just by reheating and doing this a second time. Thank you guys, lots of nice comments being said about us and teaching. All right, let's see here, friends. All right, there we go. So it just needed a little extra time, maybe because it was so very solid. But in the end, that turned out and you've got this really, you probably can't even see the beautiful sparkling diamonds in the video because it's really the rainbow iridescence is coming through. But it looks fun and I'm actually excited to try to use this piece on a card. So, okay, so there we have it, friends. Don't get disappointed if something doesn't work out as you start peeling away your release paper. Um, just gently put it back try it again. And uh, I bet if you try it again, you will get much better results from that first time. So, all righty, I'm going to send it on over to Heather. All right, you guys, I am super excited about this next part. This was after we'd had the solid foil plate um, and I'd been testing it for a while. I think it was even before we released it. Um, so everything we've been showing you. So all of this right here, this is a special technique. This is not what you would normally use with your hot foil plates. I just want to disclaimer this. Um, but I started my hot foiling with toner foiling, with deco foil, with a laminator or a mink machine. And I never felt like I had good results, which is why I waited so long to start thinking about getting into hot foiling and foil plates. Um, and the reason I'm saying this is because I had this light bulb moment thinking about the solid foil plate. And I was like, I wonder if it would work. I'm just going to try. So for what I'm going to show you today, these are using the solid foil plate just for the heat. And then your die cut machine provides the pressure, kind of like your laminator would provide both of those together. And it's toner reactive foil. So only for this, you would use deco foil, their transfer um, foil that's designed to transfer with toner. Um, so like I have some samples here with, these are deco foil toner card fronts. You can get, these are clear acetate um, that have our printed toner on that. These are pre-printed sentiments that several companies have. Um, and even, I don't know about all of them, you have to confirm that they are, or print out your own. This is a print on watercolor paper. Um, both of these came from Simon Says, but there are a lot of different places you can find them. But I tested on these watercolor ones because I thought, I wonder if those are toner printed and if it would work. So I'm going to show you a little bit of how those work. I have some samples I made already. I might not go through all of them, but I kind of wanted to show you a little bit of how. Um, so the toner print and the sentiments, I had fairly seamless results with those. 
the watercolor paper. Both of these were with the Gemini and I had great results. I've kind of had hit and miss. Sometimes they're perfect, sometimes they're not. Kind of like normal, for me anyway, mink um, or laminator toner foiling. Um, the watercolor paper is a little trickier because it does have a little more texture and it isn't quite as smooth. Um, but let's kind of just do a couple of these. I'm going to start with the easier, um, a little more foolproof one, one of these toner card fronts. These are nice and smooth and tend to work really well. And the, what I love about this whole technique and idea, the timer there, and I like to give this extra time to heat up, but I have limited space. So I'd gotten so into hot foiling that I kind of just decided I was over my mink and I was gonna get rid of it anyway and get rid of all my toner foiling. Discovering this though, allowed me to take all these supplies I have and make use of them with a smaller, um, smaller space, not having to take up as much room in your craft room. So again, this is a toner print. This is the toner hot foil, using it with the solid foil plate. And if you get lost on this, feel free to watch as often as you need to. I'm gonna make sure, hopefully you can see there that timer. I'm just waiting for that timer light to go off. And for this, I want all the heat and all the pressure. Um, when you get to the watercolor prints, my biggest advice there, sometimes I got a lot of overfoiling, sometimes I got underfoiling. Um, but yeah, if you use your hot foils, yeah, you're just going to get um, completely not the same results. Don't mix them up. Yes, that's very, very important. Um, but some of the watercolor ones, some of them I got overfoiling, some of them I got underfoiling. My advice is if you print any off or if you buy the pack, um, <laughs> sounds terrible, but pick your least favorite prints if you're using a pre-printed pack. That's kind of what I did to test and see. Um, and fortunately, even the ones that I got over or under foiling, they were still pretty, so I could still use them. I just had to kind of switch up my plan. And I went, I'm going to go through, I don't really need to, but I found more time and more pressure in going over it a couple extra times. Um, kind of help with that. All right, I'm going to put that on so that can get heated back up for our next go around. And then let's go ahead and peel this off. Oh, and you know what? So that was too much heat and that was too much pressure. This is exactly what I was talking about with the, so I'm going to say we don't need a show. We don't need as much time and pressure. We don't need to run it through as many times. On the Gemini, I did this on a medium heat, I think. Um, and I don't think I used a shim and it worked beautifully on the one that I got great results on. So let's just, uh, Let's swing over here. Let's do it one more time without all of that extra pressure and everything. Just because now, now my curiosity has peaked. I have some panels in here that I've already trimmed down. I'm gonna save this one here for that watercolor and put this on here. And I'm my foil plate's hot. I'm just gonna put the timer on and we're just gonna go straight. Um, when the timer goes off, we're just gonna pivot right over, put the foil on and run it through. Okay, and see if it works a little bit better. Someone's asking about an anti-static tool. I have never done that. Um, I see Nancy Stamp says no. So I'm guessing there's probably a really good reason why you would not. Um, but I've never tried and it sounds like maybe it's a good thing not to. I have heard people say that before. I know for heat embossing, it's great. Foiling is completely different. Ah, dust, that would be the problem. I can understand that then. <clears throat> All right, so here's our piece. This looks like it's about ready to be done. The every, everything you do, every mistake, it's not a mistake, it's something new that you've learned. Um, that's kind of, I remember my mom always saying, there's no mistakes in crafting. Um, just, new creativity or you learn something. And this is the perfect example of that. So I'm gonna pop that on there, put the plate on there, and we will run it through here this time. Just one time. We've already got higher heat. And put this back over here to heat up for our next little test. And then let's 
see if we have better, oh, much, much better results this time. So much better. Can you see how perfect that is? All right, so too much time, too much heat, too much pressure is the enemy of the smooth cardstock. Now, the only thing with toner prints, you can't use this negative piece unless you have just the black full printed toner sheets. I don't have any of those, but I'm happy that I'm just not wasting all these other supplies I have. So to me, that's helping me not. Um, the shiny side does go against the plate, yes. Just like with normal um, hot foil, and then your toner goes facing. You kind of have to kiss those together. The dull side with um, the toner print. So there you go. Too much heat, too much pressure. And we got a bunch of overfoiling and a little bit better with this. So let's, this is hot again. I'm gonna put that timer on. I'm gonna toss that and then let's try the watercolor paper. Let's see what kind of results we get on that. I have, um, I cut my foil a bit small in that piece, but I think we'll still be able to make it work. Yes, and one of my favorites um, for this is doing my pre-printed sentiments because I love those sentiments, even in black, um, but they're so much better if you can do them in gold too. <clears throat> and yes, um, I see Nancy Stamps keeps saying it on there and I'm gonna keep repeating. Um, please, please, please know and make note that all of this technique is just kind of a bonus with the solid foil plate. It's only the deco foil with the toner sheets. They won't interchange. You can't use the deco foil with your hot foil plate or it'll do nothing. You can't use your Spellbinders hot foil with the toner or it'll probably foil the whole sheet. It's not gonna um, distinguish between. And I don't quite know, the. I'm not smart enough on the science to know, but I'm guessing there's some chemical bonding of heating um, the toner ink, see this is hot now. So let's get this ready to go. Um, that's gonna make this work. So let's see what our results come back with on this one. It's like a whole new experiment. This up one more time. See if I still want to uh, do our sentiment and then we'll be done with this. All right. And you know what? That worked beautifully for me. So if you test, like I can see a couple tiny little specks where I can see the black through the gold foiling, but they're minuscule. And if you watercolor this, you would never, ever, ever see them. Um, and yes, if you use the waste toner, this is very true. If you used the reverse on the toner sheets, you would have black showing through instead of white. That is accurate. Um, so I don't know um, if there's another way to do that, but at least for now, that kind of shows you a perfect example of on that watercolor paper. My platform's ready. I'm going to heat that one more time. And then um, those pre-printed sentiments, you can do them in a full sheet, kind of like we just did with that. But generally what I like to do, because it might depend what project I'm doing, um, for what color foil I want. Plus it's a great way to use up my scraps. I just trim out that little strip that I wanna use and I get my hot foil, um, again, using those scrap pieces up just perfectly. So I'm gonna get that just ready to go there. The great thing is you don't ever have to worry with the deco foil about um, foiling your plates because it's only gonna stick where the toner is. You're not gonna have that deco foil um, stick to any of your um, your solid foil plate if you put it on the wrong way or your plates here or anything. Um, so yes, for clarity, this will be our last one here as soon as that timer goes off. And then I think Lee and I are gonna switch back and forth and finish off here by showing you um, a couple of examples of cards that we've created that use those negative foil pieces. It's off one last time. Ah, okay. Do a very good job. Of ah. okay. Ignore me. Talking about burning fingers, huh? Okay. Run this through the machine. The 
remembering not to. All right, let's peel that off. Beautiful. And now I've got that sentiment all hot foiled and ready. And I even noticed there I have a tiny, tiny bit of overfoiling. I definitely can tell my machine has a little more pressure. So I put that on and maybe even run it through a little quicker so it doesn't have as much time if you have that result on there. Because you really can't, um, yeah, you can't really make that have less heat or less pressure. So the best would just be make it as quick as you can to run through there without extra time on that heat and pressure. All right, I'm going to switch back to Leah and let her show you some of her projects. And then we'll switch back over to me one more time and then we'll wind this down. Hey there, friends. Well, class is really close to being over. But last week when we were doing the just the hot foiling 101, we had a request from a couple of people saying they would like to see more projects using the negative foiled piece, which as I thought about it, I was like, you know, I'm really great about foiling those negative hot foil pieces, but they're right. I am not super great about always turning them into a card. So one thing that I want to mention, both Heather and I were good about that this week and in our lives. So my live on YouTube and Heather's live on Facebook, we both created cards um, and we made sure to use a negative foiled background. So that is this guy here. This is the Lush Vines um, hot foil background. And then, um, of course, in the live, we also used the solid hot foil plate to create the negative and you just get these lovely, glorious backgrounds. Now here is one where I've used the reverse image a lot more subtly. So I did use the reverse image of one of our sentiments. And then this is our brighter days. And what I did with this one is I just used a couple of the leaves and tucked them in as accents for um, the negative uh, piece. And then finally in this card, as you can see, I have foiled the negative piece from our new arch backdrop and combined it with uh, just a normal foiled sentiment and a little bit of layering stencils. So I have some more samples where I have done like reverse foils of sentiments, but I thought I would just show you these three because we are closing in and we are a little bit past our hour. So, but keep in mind, we are, we now realize that we haven't been really good about showing as many samples with the reverse foiled images. So I'm sure we'll see that more often um, in the future. And so Heather's just gonna show you a couple more of her samples as well. Okay, just run through mine a little bit. I saw someone ask me real quick for toner. Um, they were looking for a toner printer. I actually don't have one, so I can't give any recommendations. The only toner foil printing that I've done on my own is I actually went to the office store and it was years ago and it was when I was using my mink and I didn't have great results then so I'm just assuming if you had good toner printing so perhaps think about like an office copy store if you have hammer mill you could take that in that would be a good way to test that out um, but real quick this is my version with that reverse heart grid and I did this for yesterday's Facebook live like Leah said we're going to try and do a little better at that and I haven't even posted these cards yet. I showed a sneak peek. This is my first time ever using the rainbow foil. And oh my goodness, they're super fun. And a great way to use these is trimming them in half. So you're using the original and also the negative. And if you look close, remember those brush sentiments that I showed earlier, I used those negative sentiments. So when I kind of explain how you have the white with the foil around it, that's the reverse of the sentiments. And that's why I love using, here's another one I haven't posted yet that uses one of those reverse sentiments. And it's just such, such a subtle difference. And it just gives you two different versions. And then um, I have this card that I've used. I did the positive and the negative of the, it was one of the folk garden sets, I think folk garden two. Um, and those are just kind of tucked in there. So the greenery and the floral kind of like that one Leah showed are great. And then the rest of these are mainly just reverse sentiments. And I've got more in the works with some of the backgrounds and using those. I think I've even created more of them. I just couldn't find them when I was thinking of it here for this. Same thing, sentiment on that one, sentiment on this one. And I tell you what, those perfect sentiments, 
if you hot foil the regular and the reverse of those, you get so many sentiments in just a few seconds. And then another really favorite set with um, the reverse foil is that Ina Alpha. There's the stencil and the die and the hot foil, but the negative is so beautiful and intricate and detailed on that one. All right, I'm gonna switch my camera around and then we'll pop back on and say our goodbyes and any final finishing questions. I know we probably missed a lot going through here today. Um, so yeah, we didn't have a moderator. So unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. uh, we there wasn't going to be a whole lot of chance for us to watch comments and questions <laughs> at all. But hopefully uh, this past hour and five minutes has given you some troubleshooting advice for getting your hot, your solid hot foil plate to work better for you if you've been struggling with it. And hopefully it also just makes you feel better that um, you're not the only one that can get, you know, splotchy or irregular mm. results from it. Heather and I get that all the time and we, we work through it. And um, one thing is uh, just try that reheat thing. You know, if you pill a little bit back and it's splotchy, um, gently put that back and try it again. And I would say nine times out of 10, when you do that, uh, you're gonna get really fantastic results the second time around. And I did just see someone ask if we typically do the reverse all at the same time. I tend to save up when I'm hot foiling. I kind of save up a few of them and then do them all at once. Sometimes I do them right at the same time, but getting that solid foil plate nice and hot is so helpful. So I tend to do them kind of all in a row. I get that foil plate hot and just, run through and do a bunch of them at the same time. Um, and I'm opposite. Oh. So typically I saved some actually for today, but I don't mm -hmm. typically do that. Typically I will foil and then I will solid foil. So I have it all done and I can put it all away. So, and if I'm doing like a live or, you know, just one thing, I'll do that. But I think if yeah. I am foiling something quickly, I don't always do that because I want to save it up and, and kind of make it work. But a lot of times when I sit down and foil, I sit and do all the things anyway. So then I do do the hot foil plate, but it's not necessarily usually a one, one to one ratio. <laughs> Perfect. So that is solid hot foil plate 101. Um, it will be available for replay, replay either immediately after or very quickly after um, we, I hit the end button. Um, so uh, I've, it will be saved into, uh, I created recently a new foiling playlist on our YouTube channel. So you can awesome. see all of the different foiling videos we have out there. One other note I forgot to mention earlier. Um, I know the video we did last week, I went through and did a whole comparison of all the white cardstocks I had with one kind of foil, but I also showed all of the results I got with the reverse foil plate. So if you want to see more on that, um, and I got across the board, almost perfect results using the aura hot foil. That's kind of our foolproof. If you're starting and you need something that you're almost guaranteed to get good results on, that's the one to test. One thing I actually wanted to address real quick, because I saw someone, I saw a comment, but you were talking and I didn't want to interrupt. Someone was like, can deco foil go, go bad? And I don't know about deco foil, but I did want to mention that Aura has always mm -hmm. been, my work, been my workhorse and I was using it and using it and I used it to the end of a roll and I opened a new one and then all of a sudden nothing would foil right. And it didn't matter how long it had been heated up how many shims I had, it would literally not foil. So I had taken pictures of like the aura foil results from the, the original, you know, the workhorse one, and then the new box and then the, the results I was getting from those same paper, everything was the same except for this new roll of foil. And I, I contacted my friend at Spellbinders and I was like, can foil rolls be bad? And I sent her the photos and she's like, well, she goes, that's a first for me. She goes, but I would say, yes, <laughs> that foil is bad. Throw it away. And I'm sending you a new one. So I do think that yes, sometimes probably very rare, but a foil can just maybe not be manufactured correctly or something happen. Um, and that's another great troubleshooting is if you're yep. just using one roll of foil and you can't get good results, switch. Try another one, <laughs> grab Never another know. foil and try it because, um, it's possible that you're just having some issues. And then I wanted to give one final tip. If you're still having a lot of trouble with your solid hot foil plate, I might recommend um, using specialty cardstock. So the synthetic cardstock that's out there, like the uh, Spellbinders Glimmer cardstock that they came out with or Yupo paper, 
It's a little bit more expensive, but um, typically it will yield really fantastic results every single time. So that, and that may make you feel as you're dialing it in just a little more confident. And one other thing I want to address, I was starting to type out the answer and then I realized it's probably better just to say this one. Um, that asking about the Aura and what brand. The Aura is the Spellbinders brand. Yeah. And I would recommend that if you're using the Glimmer machine. If you're using the Gemini, I would stick with their hot foil for the best results for figuring out and dialing in your machine because you'll be able to use a lower heat. So I wanted to clarify that, that we say Aura is great. Aura always works. But <laughs> if you're, if you are using the Gemini foil press, I would start with their foil until you kind of get yourself situated and learn what works. Cause a lot of times that can, um, that can make a difference. I discovered here just in the last day or two of starting to pull my Gemini machine out a little more. So. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Someone did mention this in the comments, and so I, I will just bring it up really briefly right now. Uh, registration for our first virtual event of 2022 went live today. So if you are interested in um, a weekend of card making with five really fantastic instructors, Heather and myself included, <laughs> we get to be included in that. Um, but we also have Angela Simpson, Shannon Pelletier, and a really lovely watercolor artist named Manu Shri. I'm probably going to need to ask her how to actually say her name correctly. Um, so I could have totally butchered that. But anyway, we have um, Create and Connect virtual event May 21st and 22nd. Registration is open now. It's open through February 13th. Um, so if you want to join us um, for a fun weekend of crafting with really beautiful Pinkfresh Studio products, then uh, be sure to check it out. Be sure to read the entire description of the event because it will give you really everything that you need to know. What is going to be included in the event kit, what you need to provide to you know, su successfully go through class and all of the things that you can expect um, with the event. So I just wanted to briefly mention that. One final question that I forgot I had seen earlier and then I'd forgotten and someone just asked again. So I didn't wanna ignore that one is asking about tape to use the best tape. If you go back and watch last week's video, we talked a little bit about the hinge method and using tape. And I think we talked about different, um, but I know, I think I have mint tape that's from scrapbook.com. I've used post-it tape, the lowest pack tape that you can and the least amount is kind of the best um, advice. But we do talk about that in last week's video. And I so. really try to avoid using any tape with my solid hot foil plate, just because I kind of noticed that it does leave a little residue on yes. your solid plate and then that foil sticks to it. So, yeah. uh, and then you have to clean it fully. Uh, I do clean my hot, my solid plate with rubbing alcohol. And then I just make sure I buff it real dry. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I, it, I'm a broken record. I clean everything with rubbing alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> and I have, I think someone else asked about scratches and dents and things. I've used my sol solid foil plate so much yeah. and I have those. It's fine. It's Mine is fine. all scratched up and it still works great. I feel like it's more affected by making sure your plates that you don't use like wrinkled cardstock on top with the solid foil plate. If you do a, a shim and it's got wrinkles or imprints on it, you're probably going to yeah. notice that more. But make sure if you get like, you know, finger residue, you know, oils from your fingers on it, just buff it off real quick. Or if you notice it's kind of lindy, just, or dusty, get any paper dust or anything off of it. All right. I think that's All right, fine. friends. Thank you so much well, for joining. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, we are so excited that you guys joined us for our our first two 101 classes. You know, these were our one you know hot foiling and the solid hot foil plate 101 class. Now, um, not like next week by any means, but we're going <laughs> we to break. continue <laughs> to do these 101 class series on our products um, just to help you know help find the best ways to use all of the different types of products and the di different product suites that we offer. So um, be on the lookout for these in the future. We will do everything that we did with these classes. We'll create events. We'll send out emails, save the dates, that kind of stuff. So yeah, thank you all so much for joining okay. us. We hope that uh, this helps with your solid hot foil plate. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully it's something that you can reference again and again. Have a wonderful weekend. Uh, yes. maybe you'll get to register for the event or maybe you'll get some foiling time in this weekend. Who knows? Sounds like a fun <laughs> weekend to me. <laughs> all right, friends, all right. you all have a wonderful rest of your day.
Bye. See you soon. Bye-bye.